Welcome back to the Face It Ignite Halo European Open, where we are delving into the final few games of the day. We will find out soon enough who our champion of the Face It Ignite is. My name is Rose Spears, and I have been on the desk all weekend with lovely Lethal, and we've got Dan Gaskin joining us before this next matchup. But we're going to be talking about uh, Tox and uh, RBL, the game that we just saw there, because. We were prefacing it saying that it wasn't to be expected that Tox were going to completely trounce them, right? But, I mean, it came out a 3-0, pretty expected from them. Yeah, it was only game three, which I was quite surprised. It was uh, quite close, but at the end of the day, it's the same as what happened in game one. Don't get me wrong, RBO had a fantastic defense. They always made sure there was two alive, either both on flag or one in Morland flag. And they didn't get the best of spawns either. But the main thing is the defense was good, but a lot of people were probably watching it thinking it's getting to a stage where they're just delaying the inevitable and it was just a matter of time where Tox will just go walking all over them and that's exactly what happened. So not the best of game ones. Really good starts though from RBL in this particular game. I know the game one it ended up as a 3-0. I thought they were actually keeping Tox at bay and keeping them at arm's length for quite some time. But then it was when Tox finally got set up and it was the consecutive overshields that they were able to grab. That's when really RBL started to struggle because Tox were really dictating the pace of this game. RBL weren't able to even go for the overshields at times because they had to combat the constant pushes from high side. And it meant that they really struggled to get any real um, Real force on the map, to be honest. And that's what saw them go 1-0 down. And then from that, I think Tox just went from strength to strength. And yes, of course, in game three, we saw a little bit of a fight back, but it was just a little bit too late, unfortunately, for RBO Esports. And I mentioned it before on Construct CS. If you're going to have a bad start, good luck trying to make some kind of comeback. And the start of it, it was 9-1 in favor of Tox. And that, as soon as I saw that, I was just like, here we go. It's the beginning of the end. And at some stage, I have to see what happens, as you can see some. Clever plays from Snakebite there to see what he can do. Sadly, he did get taken down anyway, but it's understandable why he made that move. But it was just getting worse and worse. And some great shots, as you saw from Snipe now. But this is the game type we need to talk about. It was uh, very back and forth here and there. And there were some weird circumstances in some of their pushes. But you know what? Tox Gaming did struggle a little bit. This is the game type I feel like they were more than happy to try and dominate. But there was one segment where Tox did actually take the ball to blue. And it was a weird setup, actually. They had uh, one top gold, one blue, and there was two people green at the time. And they're keeping all the members of RBL at snipe throughout most of that game until RBL got a nice top gold spawn to break the setup. But it was so tough. And I felt like there was not many answers they could do, especially towards the end of that game. I mean, historically, we have seen Tox rosters struggle on oddball, whether it be Halo 5 or Halo 3. And I think when you get some substitutions and you get rid of some of your your best oddball players, like Lethal, for example, I think is really key when they do play oddball, you are going to struggle a little bit. So, yeah, okay, they weren't looking their best, but they still were able to get the victory and they're in the grand finals. Yes, exactly. And I mean, it's expected. It's what we've been predicting all weekend long. But as you can see, some of those lovely clips there, our players have been wearing their very own Astro headsets. Astro supplied no lovely headsets for the players to be using and they're absolutely loving them. If you want the chance to win some yourself, we've got not one, but two pairs to give away and two mix amps as well. So make sure you are clicking that link down below to be entered into to that draw. But I feel like we've got a lot to talk about coming into these final three games. Everything is on the line for our four remaining teams. What are you expecting um, coming into these next few? I think this next series is going to be one of the closest series we'll have because it's these two teams where I wasn't too sure which one will come out on top offline because both of them have their strengths, but they both have their weaknesses. You know, you're talking about the slaying power of the Aspire team because of how tactical they are. We'll have to see what happens with them. But then again, the Mazer, they look stronger than I expected. And I think Aspire may struggle just a little bit on certain game types. So this is a series where game types really will matter, but obviously we'll get into that later. So it'll be uh, quite interesting to look into. Yes, exactly. And that's going to be our next matchup coming up on stream. I mean, it, it, it's quite cool seeing these guys going head to head. We just uh, heard from Jimbo there from Aspire Esports, who was um, fe feeling pretty confident coming into this next game. Yeah, I think that there's going to be a little bit of a, a rivalry here, mainly because Mesa were one of those teams who finished in the top two and were able to get funding for this event, and Aspire finished outside of that top two uh, because they lost to RBL, who uh, just dropped from the winner's bracket, but they didn't get the chance to play Mesa's game in, in the, the bracket over there. So now this is a chance for them to show them that, hey, we probably are one of the top two teams and we maybe deserve that funding over you. Um, just speaking quickly about Aspire's last game, obviously they beat 
Team Crumpets 3-1. But it was almost expected that they'd be going that 3-0 just from see, just from watching the games down here on the floor. What did you kind of make of that one, Harry? That's a little bit worrying, actually, considering a makeshift and it's not one of... Uh, even though Guntup is a very good player, don't get me wrong, in his, in his own right. But I wasn't too sure about the other players. And I've heard of Dragonite, but I've not heard of the other two. But it seems like they really did hold their own. And I'm not too sure if they were just playing that well or if Spy were actually struggling. It was... Um, Bit of a weird thing, because I only watched one of the games, and uh, some of them were actually quite close, a lot closer than I expected, so I'm hoping that hasn't demoralised Aspire in some ways. Yeah, and they're going to have to continue that momentum as we take a look at the maps for this series. We've got some uh, of these up on the screen for you. Uh, what, what are you kind of making coming into this series, especially uh, as, as Aspire? We're literally just playing, right? I think Aspire will be feeling good. I mean, contrary to what Harry just said, and uh, the fact that there was a little bit of a fight put up by T and Crumpets, I think... They looked really dominant in the final game of that series in, in the Heretic flag. So I think that going into Onslaught flag, they're going to be in good momentum, good spirits. They're going to be happy. They've been playing well. The shot's going to be on. So uh, I think they, they're going to like these game types, to be honest. There's no Construct Slayer, which was the one game they did drop uh, to T and Crumpets. It was a 50 to 49 as well. So I mean, like, Construct Slayer is a really, really tough game to get behind. And if you're not very good at that game type, you're always going to struggle. Uh, but I, I think they've got a good chance here, and I'd be expecting Aspire to, to, to overturn Mesa. Yeah, we'll have to see from there. Like you said before, as well as Construct, Amp's not there either. So, you know, in terms of that, both teams will be happy. But I don't think, I'm not really too sure if either of these game types do favour either teams. I'll probably say the first one, more Mesa, because how aggressive they are. You, you've seen Havoc, he flies. Like, you know, he's not mucking around. And he's one of the players where I was questioning, like, him and Flames, how well they can do. But both of them have been, been doing too bad. Havoc's been doing really well. You know, I remember him one of the MTS games, he just went completely off and I'm happy for that because he is a very aggressive player. Sometimes too aggressive, but it looks like he's managed to control the tempo, how he goes into the game. But this team here, it's going to be very interesting to see because I know they'll be quite good at maps like Construct Hill, but a lot of the game types are quite basic. I feel most of them are in favour of Mesa just due to the fact that they're not too strategical. Like, you know, on sort of flag, it's more of the, uh, the game sense, how well you can actually suffocate your opponents, the grids, how good your awareness is. And without Construct TS and Amp TS, it won't be as random. Yeah, obviously they are uh, false in one map against uh, T and Crumpets. Do you think there's anything that they're going to be bringing from that game uh, straight away coming into this one? Uh, I think they'll be more switched on. I think it, I didn't get to see that particular game of Contra Team Slayer, but whenever you lose by just one kill, it always gives you a little bit of a kick up the backside of, all right, we need to strengthen up in certain areas. And as we heard in the interview from Jimbo, they've played these guys online quite some time and they're usually successful in those scrim results. So you're going to have a, a good idea of their starting strategies and how they're going to be playing the, the game. And they know they have the upper hand here, Aspire, but it's just whether they can actually pull it out on the day. Is there anybody you're particularly looking forward to uh, seeing in this one, Harry? Well, who do I choose, you know? I think from both teams, we'll be looking at more towards Jimbo in terms of his slain ability because he knows how good he is. And I think this team fits in quite well in terms of how to um, try and push your opponent as much as you can. It like, fits his style in terms of the pace and the speed. On the other side, it will be Fusion. You know, I've said about Fusion quite a lot because I know how much of a powerhouse he is. But, you know, some of the other players on his team have actually done slightly better, if not much better. And, you know, I'm not saying he has to step up. I still think he's been playing consistently well. I've not seen all the games. So in terms of stats, I'm not too sure what he's been up to. But I think, you know, the better the teams you play against, the better he is as a person. So I'd be curious to know what's going to happen. But for Mesa, I think this is more their game types they're, you know, happy with. So it's a nice, you know, stepping stone to start with. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think so. I think that Mesa are going to feel a little bit more under pressure. I think that Aspire are expected to win this one. I think they have historically better players, arguably, even though there are some, some great old greats there. Great old greats, that works. <laughs> um, <laughs> great I, I do think that Aspire are going to be looking at the, that side of the bracket and thinking, all right, well, if we win this now, we're top three and we have, they, they want to have a chance at Tox. I'm sure they want to yeah. try and uh, get one over on those guys as well. Exactly. I'm very excited to get into this, but I'm also excited to see what you guys have been saying in the chat. You've uh, definitely disagreed with a lot of the analysts on the desk, but uh, not uh, super surprising there. Quite relative even, but 58% going with uh, Spy Esports there. Yeah, this is exactly what I expected. You know, if it was a bit too one-sided, I'd be like, oh, look, another popularity contest. But, <laughs> no, 58-42 is perfect. It could have gone either way in all fairness. So the chat is definitely spot on in terms of what's going to happen. Leading towards more Aspire, I can understand that with the wealth of knowledge on that team. The only thing they need to work on is to make sure they are aggressive when they actually do certain things. Because, you know, yeah, sure, you may have, you know, everything up here. But the thing is, oh, can you express that 
that in game? Can you actually do what needs to be done? Because yeah, sure, fair enough. You know, there's a lot of players where they know what to do, but they just don't execute. Or if they do, it's just not quick enough. It's yeah. more about pace. Everyone knows how to play this game. It's been out for 10 years. So you should be able to speed up when you need to. It's all about the reaction and awareness of when to actually do it. Yeah, well, I want to hear your guys' predictions down. Let's start off with you first. I want to hear who's going to be winning and what the scoreline is going to be. Uh, I think Aspire are going to win this one 3-0. Okay, very simple. Short, mm. short and sweet. I like it. Harry, <laughs> any different for you? I actually don't know for once, but I am going to agree with Dan, but I think it's going to be a bit closer. I reckon okay. it's going to be a game four or game five this time. Hopefully a game five, because I don't think we've actually seen one yet. No, I really want to see a game five. Do you think there potentially might be any rivalry? Obviously, as we said, we expect as Aspire to be coming through those EU qualifiers to get the funding to come here. Do you think that's going to be a bit of... um? sort of needing to prove themselves now that they didn't reach that? Yeah, I think a little bit. They'll be in the back of their heads, but I think they're, they're quite professional, these guys now, because they've been doing it for so long, so they'll be focused on the task at hand. There might be a yeah. little bit of a smack talk thrown across <laughs> because they are good friends as well outside of it. Um, but I think going into the lower bracket final is where we're going to really see rivalries potentially blow up. But uh, yes, I still think 3-0 is a potential, but if Mesa come out of the gates hot, if they can take game one, then there's definitely a chance we can get to game four, or maybe game five. Who knows? Maybe even Mesa can overturn it. Well, we'll see. And I'm really interested to hear what our casters are thinking for this one. Gentlemen, what are you making of this uh, third game? Uh, I'm looking forward to this game. I think it's going to be a really super, super tight series. Um, probably the tightest that we've had so far today. I've also noticed behind you, Freya, that the Master Chief on the wall is holding the rocket launcher like, directly next to your head. Look out! <laughs> it's like, it looks like, yeah, exactly. So just keep an eye on that. But um, I think... I'm going with Jimbo and the boys on this one. I think form's with them. I think that they've looked pretty consistent throughout the tournament. And uh, yeah, I can see them pulling out the win here. Great stuff. Yeah, I agree. I think it's going to be a 3-1, 3-0. They are going to be playing again. We talk about pace and just how fast and well-prepared these guys are. I just feel like after watching all the teams, that's how it's going to unfold. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. I can't wait to get into this one. Let's take it away, guys. Here we go, then. And it is, uh, unfortunately for both these teams, kind of a do-or-die situation now, Tom. Uh, obviously, if they lose, they're going home at this point in the tournament. They want to make it through to that final, bump up that prize money and get another shot at Tox Gaming, of course, trying to knock those North Americans off of that perch that they're sitting very pretty on at the moment. Really not been tested too much uh, in this series. But I think we are in for a very competitive series here. We haven't seen too many of them so far this weekend. But now that we're getting into you know, the latter end of the tournament, the big boy games like we were talking about earlier this is where you're going to see every single kill start to matter every single death start to matter and you're really going to see those decisions being made that can change games starting this one off with snaky on amplify or on excuse me on onslaught ctf no one plays amplify to start game one what are you talking about here jimbo flying over over towards the b2 area just getting completely obliterated by mazer gaming another flagpole coming out over here towards the A side, very quick, two Foxy being extremely sneaky. He's gonna have to toss this one over to his teammate though, because Grenade's coming in from all angles across the map. Should be a return here if they want to hop on this one. Instead, they're gonna go for the flag touch, I believe. Jimbo's going to try and get that touch. Nice That's touch by Jimbo. Throw it back, and that could be huge. Even though Havoc does come in and manages to get the stop, they still don't get the cap. Two Foxy can't do anything off of the respawn here, and now Fusion's going to be taken down. No caps on the board. They managed to get that return, and now we're back to that stalemate mid-map battle. No one up on top of the map at the moment, though, Tom, and I know that's something that you, for all of the years that we've had Halo 3 uh, being played at a competitive level, that you've been preaching and everyone else has been preaching. Yeah, high ground is just so easy because you have multiple escape routes. You can stay up top, you can drop down low. You also have a handful of different areas that you can have cover over there. But it looks like everyone's just going to kind of get the people out of their base right now. And Flux missing the assassination, but Jimbo comes in there with the help to Foxy, the guy that had the sneaky, sneaky flagpole early to start this game, now going on the slaying end of things, trying to fight people down from bottom center. Now, if you can't get top center, bottom center is actually not that bad because you do have a lot of different areas of the maze where you can run around and be fairly sneaky, and you can see everyone's got their their beverages and their pizza in the background. They're ready to, to watch this series. I hope you guys got your snacks at home as well because we're coming down to the top teams here in the tournament. Mazer Gaming versus Aspire Esports here. These teams in the lower bracket, but they're not out. The loser definitely going to be feeling bad though because they're not going to be able, like, like you said on set, continue on in the bracket. So every decision is going to be so crucial for these teams. We have a glade down shots there on two Foxy on the flag. Just like he can't quite finish off. That kill that was started, but we are seeing kills fall around the base here. Flux versus Snakey again, and 
Jimbo picking up a couple of kills in the feed means that pressure will be able to be released for just a moment as now he goes up with a 1v1 against Havoc, who smartly backs down there, not giving that death away. And on Onslaught, that's something that's so vital to do. Keep those deaths down. Make sure that you're staggering those respawns, because the moment that you do go down, two or three consecutively, that's when we see that spawn trap come into effect. And we now see Flux moving into the base, looking to get up on one of those boxes and maybe spark, start that spawn killing himself. Yeah, Jimbo unfortunately didn't see the spawn coming up in the corner area, so now two Foxy gonna try to fight this player underneath the base. That's gonna be Flames. Nice three-shot burst there to land on the head for two Foxy. He's trying to play this one fairly sneaky, though, because he sees his teammates are taking fire all over the place. Nice jump up onto the corner there. Has to back down because Flames came off the spawn over towards the area, but this is what you want to do. You want to get in the enemy base. You want to hop around. You don't want to stay in one spot too long, and you got to think about what the enemy team is calling out. They know where you are. You have to rotate. You can no longer stay in that area. Otherwise, you're going to be way too vulnerable. So one of the things when I'm watching Flames that I've really liked from him is he's constantly screen watching on over towards his right side. The snake, he's pulling this flag on over towards the B maze. He gets it past the 50 yard line. So going to be there up to the rest of the maze of gaming here to try to cover this one, but it's going to be tough because all the spawns popping up on the B side as well. Yeah, two Fox has done a phenomenal job there. I think he was the last player alive in that situation. Managed to not only stop the flag cap, or the flag run, I should say, but pick up another kill to just slow it down even more, allowing teammates to come off the respawn and get that return. There's a man who's sneaking in behind Flux and the team fire coming in there on flames to almost give Flux the opportunity to turn around and finish off that kill with a nice burst to the head. And now we have Riot set up top middle, and this is the power position. This is where you can do so much damage, not only to players coming off the respawn, but anywhere on the map, Tom, you have a line of sight. And you see Riots, even though he's no shields, he's still peeking out because he realizes his teammates are taking the cover for him, or taking the fire for him. So he has that little bit of a cover over towards top center. He's gonna try to lay down some extra damage to help these guys because that could have been a very crucial time for the Aspire boys here. But instead, Mazer now rotates over towards top center. That's gonna be Havoc with a nice nade. That's gonna take out Riots too. Foxy, he's stuck on the bottom of the base. Jimbo's on spawn trap over towards the corner. He's probably gonna be taken out by a grenade and that's gonna be Snakey doing it. Flux are the last guy alive over here. Everyone's gonna be spawning over towards the A side. Snakey realizing that tosses a grenade, but that grenade actually chokes the spawn. So now everyone's gonna spawn over towards the B side. Heads up play, realizing that the grenade did choke the spawns. Turning back around, nice shots on the Jimbo. But that's the problem. Once you split the spawns like that, they're actually gonna be popping up on A and B. Want them to all spawn A there. Run that flag over towards the B side. And just a little bit of a misplay there from Snakey, but still they were able to recover and pull this flag. So we'll see what happens. They have to slay out for another round. It's gonna be fairly tough because when you have that flag runner, you're in a three out of four situation. You could be susceptible to getting out slayed and have your enemy team come into your base. And that looks like it's happening right now as Aspire starts to advance on the map. Yeah, they need to get that second round of kills there. And unfortunately they just could have managed to do that. And still no flags on the board for either of these teams, Major Gaming or Aspire Esports. Fusion gonna be win that big battle there against Flux in the window. And there's a second kill to go alongside that first one here from Fusion. That's gonna open up the B side and now he's putting some beautiful long range shots down. Pre-aiming that corner, Jimbo's weak in the corner as well and he's just screaming, you can see, I say screaming, he's calling out those players to his teammates, he should be screaming them because they're all weak, they're all ready to be picked up and there's two for Havoc. Jimbo, once again, last player alive here and a chance for Mazer to move forward. Yep, Mazer advancing on the map, Flames coming on over towards the B-side corner. So you have to fight Jimbo though, bottom center, and Jimbo says, no, not getting into my base, not quite yet, sir. Snakey, you're gonna go get dropped as well. The flank coming in, almost a triple kill there. That's gonna be a fresh three dead. Should be an easy flag pull here as Jimbo running it towards the spawns, which isn't a bad idea if they can slay out here. Flames stuck, no shields down there. Another nice crispy shot coming in from Jimbo. But where is the help from the rest of the team over towards top center? Riots, he's in position, but unfortunately for him, didn't have any grenades, which really would have changed everything. There, he finally finds one grenade over towards top center. So that's gonna be very useful. Let's see if he can try to get anybody no shields with that one. Mark makes it right onto the ledge, but no, Snakey dodges the grenade and then just turns on him towards top center. Yeah, didn't get the damage from that grenade. Maybe that he was looking for to make that battle a little bit easier for himself. Jimbo gonna be taken down. This is just two teams just butting heads at the moment. Maybe this killing spree here from Snakey can light a fire under Mazer Gaming. Two Foxy's gonna be weak on the flag as well. 
Great shots here from Snakey after that initial double kill. And here comes the push. All players fall consecutively. This is a huge opportunity to get that flag moving. And that's exactly what Snakey's going to be doing, moving this towards the beat up. And this should be at least halfway across the map. You also noticed that Snakey was shooting a potential spawn area. So he's trying to stop them 100% from spawning over there. And there it is. Heads. Oh, overkill coming in from Fusion with the extermination. You know what that means? All four are dead at the same time. And that's a perfect opportunity for a double capture, exactly what Mazer had in mind. And it started with Snakey, and it ended with Fusion. And they're still set up, you can see. Players up the map here. Oh, Kel, that's going to be Snakey, picks up another double kill. And just like that, Onslaught showing how unforgiving it can be. Fusion forced to finally back down and desperately look for some BR ammo here as he tries to take on Riots. He's going to need some ammo finally. Jimbo comes in to end that spree, but that's how deadly it can be. One, four dead can turn into two flag caps, and that's exactly what happened for Mazer Gaming. Well, that's one way to get ammo there. You can just go back on respawn, and then you'll come back with a handful of bullets. So Jimbo helping him out there, I guess you could say, but that was a fantastic little spree there from everybody on Mazer Gaming. And what do you know? He's right back over towards top center, and I think that's one of the things we've been seeing is Riots has been the only player that's pushed top center on his team. The rest of the guys need to take, need to follow suit, take a page out of his book, try to get top center with him because two people top center is extremely powerful. That means that you can cover the flag, guys. You can watch the spawns as well. And now you have a spire in a good position to run the flag, but Snakey again with a very clutch kill. Before the flag could even, even, even get tossed out, excuse me, Onset, that was a very clutch kill because if they toss that out, now you're making a completely different decision. You have to kill the flag guy. You have to wonder what to do. You have to bait the flag. Do you return it? There's a handful of decisions that need to be made, but now you know that everything's secure and you just need to kill and frag out at your base. I think the crazy thing for me so far in this particular game is the fact that you have to say, in my opinion, apart from that double cap that we've seen, that's the first time we've really seen Mazer Gaming have control of the Aspire Esports base. You have seen Riot's up top. They've been the per people, who, the team, Aspire Esports, have been putting the pressure onto their opponents. But it seems to be just like not able to get that final kill, not able to shut down that final player. And right. on the other side of that, that player themselves is coming up huge every time with that flag stop. Right, right. And that's why this game type is to five instead of three, because it can just sway any given way. And two to three caps, you know, it, it, it can happen within a matter of a minute. So we'll see what happens here with five minutes left on the clock for these guys to try to get something going on the Aspire Esports side. Is it going to be Jimbo who makes his way over towards top? Dodges the grenade, gets the kill onto Havoc, realizes his flag's being pulled, and what a great position there for Flux. Great grenade, takes that player down the no shields, ends the killing spree there for Flames, but that flag is pretty far. Flames got it. Very, very advanced. Aspire have got some work to do here. I'd love to hear what the comms are like as they're currently chasing the game. Two to zero down. Let's jump into an Astro listening and listen to the comms. Hacks, what's the weak one? There's two. Hacks, Max. Max, I'm here in a second. Do this shit, they're all looking at me. Dan's on the east corner, weak. Free aid, free aid, free aid. Flag on me. Right through the window. I'm going to go top aid. Top aid, I'm going to look for it. Snake is much of a basement. Two there, two there. I don't know, I don't know. Top aid, top aid. He's one shot, he's absolutely, he's absolutely finishing him. He's dead, he's dead. I got a kill from the flag. That's dead, that's dead. One's B as well. I'm pushing for the Ego. Oh man, A coming. I got a kill from the basement. The basement. Tiller, 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 one dead. The basement. Oh, cool. I'll be stepped down, I'll get him. Shut the clock. Got down. One shot. One shot. Stop me now, stop me now. I'll be straight, I'll be straight. Going forward, I'm going to try and get mid. He's going up B corner, he's going up B corner. Try and get mid, cut off. Got one of them. We have to be, we have to be. We don't know. Shut the flag, Scott. Do we get the flag? Scott's dead, Scott's dead. Look at B. 3B, 3B. Dance top B, one bit on him. He's gone to still. Still worried about are you fine, Perry? I'll be down. I'll be steps now. Front again, Perry. The front again, Max. He's got low. Low, Max. 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 I'm looking, yeah, he's still B wall. If I'm inside. Top B now, Dan. One shot. Watch out, Top B, Dan. Watch out, Beast, you're Watch out the basement, watch out the basement, I'm gonna run it. He made last kid, watch out the basement. Just watch out the basement, he's gonna rear, he's gonna rear. Okay. Still weak, he's still weak there. Nice. Yeah, something I want to point out there as we come out of that listening, Tom. Again, that flag run, everything was set up perfectly. You could hear two Foxy screaming, last guy alive is under the base, he's one shot, he's one shot. And what happened again? That player lives and he shuts down the flag run. That's so unfortunate. Someone has to sacrifice their life there. Someone has to push in, get that flag touch, 
like you said, he's one shot. That's a huge opportunity to not only run that flag, but do exactly what Mazer did to you and run another one. So now they're in position to run this, but it got towards the 50 yard line. And now you have to get out of position. One player died on the flag. Another player has no shields. He has to slow play this one because grenades are coming in from all angles. So no, close to putting it in. No, they don't get it. And the return is going to come in. Huge clutch play coming in from Mazer Gaming. That's going to be Havoc getting the return there. And then Fusion there to follow it up with a flag touch of his own after picking up the double kill. So a couple minor mistakes over here in the last two minutes or so. And Mazer holding on to this 2-0 to zero lead with only two and a half minutes left. Well, I like this decision from Fusion as well. We threw the flag out, having just got those kills and just decided to bait it, try and pick up some kills of his own. And you can afford to do that with a 2-0 to zero lead. You don't have to force that flag. You don't have to give the opportunity for that counter cap to come in. So smart decision making in a pressurized situation, especially with the adrenaline pump in when you've just got that clutch return. Keeping your head on a swivel so vital, and now you're gonna have four dead here for Aspire Esports to Foxy. Well, he wasn't long destined for this world, and now Flux is gonna be taken down to no shields. And look at the melt. They're not even pulling the flag here, Tom. There's really no reason to pull the flag. You can just overslay here and just wait for your opportunity and then pull it. I like their I like where their head's at. I mean. It also slows down the communication coming in from Aspire Esports, where they could start to get a little bit demoralized. There's only a minute and a half left. I understand they're going to recognize the situation. They have to start getting desperate here for the flag, too. So as long as you're over slaying, you're going to be in a really good spot. Just don't let them get to your base. Don't let them get top center. If you have an opportunity to run a flag, make sure that it's 100% going to be a cap, because the last thing that you want to do is leave yourself susceptible for a counter. So I really like the way that they're playing this. They haven't really changed their style up or anything. Like you said, it's been a 50-50 so far, besides that little spree that we saw Mazer go on, which gave them this huge advantage in the game. So uh, I, I think that just the minor mistake that we saw earlier, plus that little spree, is the reason that we have Mazer in the lead right now. And Aspire, they're going to have to get something going. Is this going to be it right now with Jimbo pulling the flag? You have Flux choking the A spawns. You have Max Riots over there watching the B side. Looks like Jimbo, for the first time, has had the flag over past the 50-yard line without losing his shields. I'll tell yet. you what here, Tom, as well. This could be a double cap. Looking at how everything's set up here. Unfortunately, Flux goes down, I was about to say. They've had it done to them, and they had time on their side to maybe get that double cap themselves, but just couldn't execute that second round of spawn kills. Tough break for them, but with 41 seconds left on the clock, there's a still a huge chance to make this comeback. Jimbo has to stay alive here. There's another player bottom center trying to take him out as another player is pushing up towards the A side. So now Riot's charging up towards B. Is going to get that kill on to Snakey. That's huge. Two players spawning over towards the B corner. This is their opportunity. Oh, Three dead. One player left on the flag. They have to collapse on this. They're going to spawn over towards the A side as well. So now you have Riot's watching that. Jimbo has to dodge any potential grenades. He gets wailed with one. Possibly toss this one up into the window and then wait for your shields. Instead, he's going to continue Ooh, to push it. seconds left on the clock. And the flag's pulled, though. So as long as they Four don't get, Yeah, they can get this touch and it will still count. So This is a cap. Yeah, this is this a should cap. be a cap. We're going into overtime. Ooh, fantastic play there from Aspire Esports. They stay alive with just a few seconds left on the clock. We're into overtime, like you said, Tom. And Mazer Gaming, I mean, that is going to take the wind out of your sails, having led for so long, having had that situation where you're in their base, you were just putting the pain on them, just spawn killing on spawn kills, just to remind them of how in control of this map you have been. All of a sudden, you find yourself tied up, and Jimbo's starting to come to life a little bit here, 2-2. Two two, but as I say that, Havoc's back in the base, and in overtime, the comeback doesn't matter. They cap that third flag, and they will take our game one, which was one hell of a game one, 3-2. That was absolutely intense. Hats off to Mazer for not giving up there. They could have completely collapsed after allowing that second capture happen for that game to go into overtime, but they kept their heads in the game and they ended up clutching that one. Three to do, what a three to two, what a fantastic game overall. Just both teams battling back and forth, everything that you would ask for in an onslaught CTF. And sometimes it doesn't go to that five cap mark. Sometimes you see those three, two games, those four, two games. Sometimes you see even a one zero game. It's pretty difficult to capture on onslaught flag if you're constantly you know, going back and forth like that. And you take a look at the Slays and you wonder why they won the game. It's because they were getting more kills, more opportunities to run the flag. Look at that 10 spree coming in from Snakey, getting that killing frenzy. Fantastic job for him. Jimbo, he got a killing spree of his own throughout all of that, but everybody going positive on the Mazer side. Of course, we had that overkill extermination as well coming in from Fusion. His return to the competitive arena here in London. That obviously sparked that second cap in a row from the double cap that gave him that two to zero advantage. But 
If that first game's anything to go by, Tom, I think we're in for one heck of a series here. This should definitely be one hell of a series, no doubt about it. I think this is going to go to game four, game five. That's what we were saying in the predictions. Here's the series layout. Heretic Slayer coming up next. Construct King of the Hill game three. Narrow's Flag is game four. And if it goes to game five, we're going to be going into Pit Slayer, which I feel is the best game five out of all of the Halo 3 game types. What do you think? I agree, especially when it comes down to those moments. You know, when it's tied up, it gets late, and you're waiting for someone to hit that snipe or pick up that overshield or something. There's so many different facets, facets excuse me, of those of that particular game type, a fantastic way to round out a series. But I mean, the next game, Heretic Slayer, another fast paced one here. And if you're going by Slays from the last game on that arena style map in Onslaught, then maybe you've got a fancy, fancy Ma Mazer gaming to go up by two here. I look at things very similar. I think that you're right. Mazer has a good opportunity just because of the fact that they won an arena style that is a symmetrical map. So going into this one, you would think with the battle rifles with not much power weapons and power-ups to worry about, they should be in a fine position here to try to go up 2-0 to zero in the series, but never can count Aspire out. I mean, they were down 2-0 to zero with about two minutes left in that game, and they were able to rally back and tie that one, send it into overtime. And again, they made a couple of minor mistakes that really cost them the game. It was the last game. guy alive always, wasn't it? It, it just is. just stopped down so many of those flag Also, the, just that weak-ass baby toss of the flag that they, they, <laughs> they... Whoever tossed that flag out needs to go with the gym, go to the the gym, gym. with us afterwards. Because, you know, we've skipped... I've skipped the gym for two straight weeks, so I can't really say anything. But, yeah, I mean, when you toss the flag out, if you're going to toss it, give it a man's toss, okay? Toss that thing over towards bottom center. Watch APG toss the flag and then come talk to me. I think that's something... Going back to my point about that last guy alive again, especially on, again, this arena style map that we have game number two here. If they can address that, if they can recognize, which is something huge to do as well. If you can recognize that situation up, in, huh? in the middle of the series, you stay chill, dude. Yeah, we're you chill, can, we're you chill. can enjoy yourself, don't worry. I'll, I'll stand I'm up. Short, Makes me look I'm short now. Yeah, you look like, we look like Dan and Sims now, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> But um, what, going back to my point I was making is, is, you know, if they can find that last player alive and they can execute on that collapse on that last player, I think they're in a good spot still. I think this series yeah. really is tied up well. Yes, they, they lost that first game, but it's a simple thing to address. Yeah, and you heard the communication. They were fine. There wasn't any type of lapses. They were constantly calling out. They had small talk going on. When I think about the Astro Listen, and one thing that they could improve on is saying... I hear you or I'm responding to a call out because a lot of times what happens is you just call out what you see, right? And you're like, hey, two guys over here, this guy's one shot, this guy's one shot, two over here, like say what you're doing, say, okay, I'm responding to this call out. Yep. Okay, I have your help. Oh, hey, I need help over here. And you could tell how much this, these teams have played against each other. They're even using the other players' real names. Yeah. So it's very personal between these two. And like you said, you wouldn't be surprised to see some sort of trash talk going on between them. You saw a couple of LPRs and players getting hyped up and not sure if that picked up in our mics or not, but that's what you're looking for from well, these high quality Halo games. Well, speaking of the players, let's uh, jump down to Wonderboy who's on the floor right now because he's uh, got a little bit of an update on how the players are feeling. Harry, how well, you doing? Mark, you good? Uh, yeah, I'm doing great. It's getting very fiery down here in the arena, and Tom is absolutely right. There are some very, very highly strong emotions down here. Just as Aspire put in the second cap just before regulation ended, two Foxy shouted, you bottled it, boys. But on the other side, as Tom said, so many massive LBRs are being shouted out by Havoc. And it's, everyone's getting loud. It's absolutely it's that game one, it. isn't it? Right, you don't shout that kind of thing in game one. You Certainly shout that not. at the end of a series when you won the series. It's one of those <laughs> where it's a game you really want to win, obviously, because you're still in the bracket, but also because it's your mates sat opposite, each, uh, opposite from you. You're sat opposite each other. You want to be screaming and getting in their heads. Okay. Just hopefully no one throws gum at each other because <laughs> I've been there, done that, and it's not a good time. It's hey, not a good look. At least it wouldn't get stuck in our hair these days, Tom. Yeah, Although yours is more of a kind of could yeah, get stuck choice. In my I feel like this that's is a true. bit of an occupational hazard i got going on here. I still have quite a lot of hair It looks here. good. At least you don't have a colic like Dan. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Harry. Beautiful stuff, as always. Keep us up to date. You're doing a banging job. But, uh, yeah, always interesting to see the players obviously getting a little bit fired up and uh, obviously wanting to win this series. We knew that anyway with what's on the line, but... You know, you can pretend to be friends. Well, you can be friends. I shouldn't say pretend to be friends. You can be a friend away from the game, but as soon as you get in the game, it's all business here. Money's on the line. Yeah, I mean, you, you have to you have to watch out for for these guys because they like they have so much firepower on the Aspire side. So if I'm Mazer, I'm feeling good about things, but I'm not getting confident at all. Uh, I mean, you want to become confident, but never cocky here. Never over challenge. Stay alive that extra second. We've talked about it so many times what that can do for your team. And we're starting this one off with two Foxy as Snakey coming out hot with a double kill. 
He likes to go car side to start the game. I know you were saying he's a P3 magnet, but it looks like he's figured it out in terms of what he wants to do to rotate. And this is a great opportunity for Mazer to jump off to a hot lead. Look at this, six to one guys, already starting this one off with the spawn trap as well. Fantastic, fantastic stuff from the guys in red. Yeah, the team shoot has really been solid so far. And here is Snakey, Tom, up on P3. He is. He dies immediately. But anyway, let's forget about that for a moment, because look, Flames. He's just pushing in and so many players a week and the team shot the communication here is absolutely phenomenal from Mazer Gaming. That player was up on P3 for about two seconds before three or four BRs were all located on him, raining down shots and you can see all three players spawning in the same location. That's exactly what you want and Havoc's not even being looked at and he's doing so, so much damage. 17, 18 to 7 now. This game's getting out of hand pretty quick. It is, and they're in great position to continue to run these spawns. A couple of players, oh, what a stick coming in. I believe that could have been a team stick, but Riot's gonna get the kill for that one. He's pushed his way out over towards P3. Doesn't get the melee in and the help coming in from Snakey and the rest of the guys. Fantastic way to go for Mazer. They need to continue to add the pressure though. Continue to rotate on the spawn traps. Continue to call out a ton. Now Riot's, what can he do as he pushed over towards P3 last time? Now making his way over towards top center, realizing that he is the player that holds the top. He's the tallest player on the team. He wants to have the high ground. <laughs> that is the definition of high ground when you have Riot's top mid, but the only thing that was letting him down a little bit there was he shot, to be honest, had the opportunity to finish off that kill on Fusion, who was P2, and two Foxy's gonna be taken down by Mr. P3 Snakey. Gets the double, lays down some shots towards the base as well. And again, you see, Players trapped in the base at the moment. Flux managed to get out though, and maybe that's going to be the catalyst to try and extend out and push the P side of the map, but they're just not letting it happen. They're collapsing so, so quickly on them. Yeah, the team shot right now from Mazer has been Ooh, phenomenal. Shots from Flux though. That was six shots, no doubt. They get straight out, but that's going to give him information that two players are coming up over towards the street. So that's really big that he won that fight just so he can gain that information. And now they're starting to bring it back just a little bit, 29 to 22. Not too shabby here for the Aspire guys. Hey, they came back in game one. Why wouldn't they be able to do it in game two? And that's what I'm talking about. Don't get a little too overconfident. Continue to keep your foot on the gas here. If you're Mazer Gaming and you could see yourself possibly advancing to that loser's finals, depending if you can keep up that momentum. So they just got to continue to do it big. And Havoc has been really impressive this tournament so far. Let's see what he has in store with us with the seven kill lead. I love the fact that he shot about three or four different targets in around five to 10 seconds when all those players were alive there for Aspire Esports and he's still on P-side, finally gets taken down by some cross-map shots, but he was doing so much work for his team there. Two Foxy will be taken down here after Flames drops the shields, 35 to 27. The one worrying thing here for Mazer Gaming is yes, they've had this lead for the majority of the game. Yes, they got out to this hot start, but it's still a manageable deficit here for a comeback to happen once again from Aspire. All you need is one killing spree and someone's right back into this game here. So 36 and 30, like you were saying, not too bad, but they cannot trade kills like they're doing right now. And they have to get back over towards top center P3 and car in order to own most of the real estate and trap these guys on one of the side bases. So completely possible, but let's see what Jimbo's gonna be able to do is he has a couple grenades being chucked over towards P2. Gonna throw another one over there as well as he maybe makes his way over to P3. Nope, instead gonna go over towards P2. Has a spawner to help over towards the side, which is really big. That should have him somehow going, going and getting a trade. So that's what I'm talking about. They cannot afford to trade kills in those types of situations. Ooh. Two Foxy runs into two respawners as well. And now you're seeing that push on the car side of the map and that's perfect stuff here from Mazer Gaming. Not only delaying their deaths, but making an organized push in towards the base, putting the pressure back onto their opponents, and now it's just five kills to go. This one looks like it could be a 2-0 series advantage for them if they can close this one out. Two Foxy picking up one kill there onto Havoc. Jimbo picking up another. Two players trapped in P2 here, and the last player alive is going to be taken down, and just like that, 4-4. Four, four. All consecutively here for Mazer Gaming and Aspire Esports. They're making that comeback. Four kills the difference now between the two teams. They like to do it late. They're like, all right, guys, as soon as we're just about to lose, that's when we're going to really try. Let's go with that strategy. If they could just play like this the entire time, they would be winning these games, but they're just turning up a little bit too late. Is it going to be enough? 47 to 43. Havoc, Havoc finding another double kill. kill as well. So they only need two more here. Again, Flames finds another. 49 to 46 here, and is it gonna be Flames? No, it's gonna be Havoc again with the Warrior Cry. Another close game. Mazer Gaming looking strong, up two to zero. 
in this series. I believe the chat was ro uh, voting against them this time. I'm going to be honest with you, Tom. I believe they were. I they, can't remember. <laughs> I think that Mazer Gaming was around like the 42 to 46 percent area. So it's pretty insane to see, you know, them have 80. Oh, it was 58 percent Aspire. So it, it's wild that Mazer had like an 84 uh, percent one, one before that when they were going against RBL Esports. And now all of a sudden it seems like Aspire fans are coming out of the woodworks and they're not living up to the hype right now. Down 0-2. They're going to have to get it together and just say, hey, guys, these last two games, they were heckin' close. They were so close. We can turn this around, but we have to start stronger. That was, that was the great point. It was horrible start. Horrible start the last two games. I mean, not as bad an onslaught as it was previously, but, I mean, they were down by at least 10 kills. And then they brought that back to, what, a three-kill game? So really great job towards the mid and end game, but horrible, abysmal start giving themselves so, so much to do in those type of situations when we get down to these crunch matches in the tournaments. Well, you can't afford to be doing that. 50 to 46 was the final score. And I need to give a shout out to Havoc here. Probably of all of the players that are currently playing in this lobby, I'd say coming into it, Havoc, before this tournament, maybe wasn't on the level of some of the other players who were in this lobby, but my word, what a performance he's put in so far in this series. That double kill in a clutch situation when you're coming off respawn, yes. huge towards the end of the game, just relieves all of the pressure that your opponents are putting onto you, and all, all of a sudden you've won the game. It's but, as simple as that. But also don't forget about the P3 magnet, Snakey, that you were talking about, and I didn't see many other players taking advantage of that spot on the map, and we know that's the strongest part of the map, so you got to try to get up there and really the only person going up top is tall man riots you know so he's used to being up there and seeing above everybody and he has to continue to do that but he's gonna need help i would love to see somebody working with riots trying to take the high ground because i'm just not seeing it quite yet and now you're moving into let's see what's game number three here? Construct, construct, construct king of the hill you have to be up top you gotta construct get the king of the hill I think, so uh, one thing that I wanted to say about getting up top as well is, you know, I think a few players on a spy here are thinking, I'm going to hit the flank, but it's three players. And when that happens, it's not a flank because you've no. got no fire coming it's, in for that to a be a flank. Except, essentially, you're just separating yourself across the map. And that's what's allowing them to get out to these huge starts because you're having one player trying to fight against two or three players instead of someone sitting up in those power positions, laying those shots down for them, that flank to become effective. Again, something that needs to be addressed here. The team fire from Mesa Gaming has been absolutely superb so far in the first two games. It really the one has. Thing, the one thing to point out here, though, is we do have some power weapons on the map now. Maybe that That's is something change things. that can change things up. That's going to change things for sure, because we haven't seen what the guys from Aspire are going to be able to do. And you were looking at the first game type, Onslaught CTF. You look at game two, Heretic Slayer, both symmetrical maps. Both don't have power-ups, power weapons, nothing but, g but grenades and BRs. And now you're having to deal with custom power-up. You have to deal with rockets. You have to deal with sniper. You have to deal with a moving objective. So this could be the opportunity here where you have an elongated game, where you have opportunities to make team decisions together. And like you said, now you have to get up top because you're playing constructing the hill. And if you're stuck down low, you're absolutely screwed. But what do you know? Another oh, awful bad start, start for awful, Aspire. Awful, awful I don't start. know if it's a bad start or if it's just a freaking great start for Mazer Gaming. It's both. Rockets in the hands of Mazer Gaming almost immediately. Then complete control. The triple from Fusion as well. 14, 15, and rising on the hill time. Perfect start. You couldn't have asked for more here for Mazer Gaming. And for Aspire Esports, this is everything you did not want to happen. It's deja vu. And all of those vibes that you might have been able to claw back with that little break there. A little bit of, God, oh, don't worry, those games have gone. All of a sudden, that bad juju starts coming back again. You start thinking, oh, no, not again. We've given ourselves so much to do already. They need to start milking the hill, and they finally jump in there. They lost about 15 seconds that they could have had throughout all of that, but I think they were a little bit worried on where the spawn exactly was because they knew that they were at gold, but they couldn't find the rest of the players. So they wanted to just pick these guys apart, double reload coming in there for Fusion. He's going to smartly back off and then waste that rocket, and it's not that much of a waste because of the fact that he's just trying to stay alive, and it's so important while you're in the hill to try to distract these guys over towards the open side because the last thing that you want them to do is shoot your hill guy from the open street. So he's just over here doing what he can to stay alive. Meanwhile, the rest of the guys on Aspire are fighting so hard in the lobby. While that's happening, 51 seconds were put on the clock. 51 to zero. Once again, Aspire Esports. Well, it's like putting a treadmill on the elevated setting before you even set off.
making it as difficult as possible for themselves. See Foxy finally drops down. And that hill's going to be rotating in around 20 seconds. Up to that open side. See the first custom's going to be popping as well. And maybe this is the opportunity to get a few kills on the board. He still can't finish off that kill on Snakey. Finally takes him down. There's a player up in the closed lift now who's chasing him down again. The communication and the team fight here from Mazer is superb. And I love that someone else went into the hill to add an extra 14 seconds right there. It may not seem like a lot, but think about also Flux right there. Possibly could have waited and got the full custom. But yeah. think about the Guardian Ball game that we saw earlier where it just was 141 to 140. Every second matters so much. So to go and be able to rack up 14 dirty seconds of time while no one's looking and you're able to help your uh, your teammates burn the custom power up, that's just a phenomenal job for Mazer Gaming. They're playing better than they've played all weekend. Now they didn't let Havoc stay alive top gold here. I like that push from Aspire Esports. You could see the thought process was right from Havoc, trying to desperately stay alive, get a kill. It just means now that they can rotate back here, Aspire Esports, towards that hill. Fight back through lobby control, and they will have the first shots on these opponents. Here's the kills coming their way. Now they need to move towards that objective, make that decision to push up the street as Riots clears out the final player here. And that should be time on the board. But a trade, a big trade coming up there from the player lifting up the purple, and Flux is going to slide down bottom mid here, and I don't think he quite meant to do that. Nope, not at all, but he's going to just try to recover here as the Rockets did pop up. So curious to see who was able to pick those up. and. Not too bad. Ooh, unfortunate for Riots. He had to drop down low, and it's the sneaky, sneaky man picking it up, and he's just going to switch on over to his BR. Smart play, not wasting a rocket there. Going to drop Fluxer, checking to see if anyone's popping up that close purple. And the best place to watch this would actually be on the street. So a crazy oh, turn of events here as he drops triple. down for the triple kill. And I love that he's thinking about getting back up top. He's even looking at Fusion like, you want to die too, bro? You want to die too? <laughs> Don't. Push me, Scott. Because <laughs> I will fire that rocket. He calls out the respawn as well. So in this situation, they've got everything going their side. But a strong push through lobby here means that Snake is put into a position where he's going to put himself into a smart position to at least stop the hill time as the last player alive there. If he can get away with his life, that would have been huge. But perfect rocket use there. Perfect execution on the power weapons like we talk about, like we like to preach. And now look at this. Power weapons have been effective. Why not get a power-up as well? Such a smart free nade right there from Flames. He knew exactly where his most vulnerable angle was. Chucks a grenade down there, starts rotating towards the hill, even backs off because he's weak. It's going to be Riots coming in there to take down Fusion, and a big double kill there for Riots because they could have been just continuing to pile on even more time, and we know how deadly they were in that very first hill that dropped. So heads-up play there from Riots, and he's really been the only player to me that's been actually taking smart positions and getting clutch kills right now on the Aspire Esports team, and I know that there's just so much more talent that we're not seeing, and it makes me wonder, is it Mazer Gaming, or is it Aspire Esports just playing a little slow? I think that's a little bit of both, and everybody just going huge in their own right. Fusion's been doing amazing things. He started off with a triple kill. Havoc's been clutching it. Snakey's been in position. Everybody has been doing their job on the Mazer Gaming side. Well, something I will listen to is the Mazer Gaming communication. Their team shot's on fire, and that usually links in with the comms. Let's jump into an Astro, listen in, and see how it's going down. That's fine, that's fine. We're there, this uh, group out. Sniping hill, sniping hill. I want Jim, I want Jim. He's setting C2 as well. C2 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 I'm looking for C2. I'm just nading there. Two here, there's two here. Two here, there's two here. Two in lobby, two in lobby, lads. Hell's behind me. We can sort, we can sort, Perry. Okay, okay. I want, I want, two guys sword. Obviously, stay in, obviously, stay in. Obviously, 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 I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna try. Wait for a sneaky kill, Scott. Watch out, lobby, lobby weak, lobby weak, turn him, turn him. I'm leaving the car. One's going, one's in like, one's. Oh, he's just sitting like mid-floor Perry. Close goal. OS, OS, OS. Close goal, two guys, two guys close on that hill. I do that, Perry's around you. He's on it, on it then. Nice. Go follow, go follow. We got it. One dead, one dead. Go weak, go weak, go weak. We're spawning mid, we're spawning mid. R2 as well. I'm dropping off. Gonna close the custom. Alright. Close goals, 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 there's three here, they're like all here, they were like literally all here, pretty sure. We have good nades, good nades. Oh, I, I live, I'm on top, 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 I
No, it I'm was sure Hamsi, 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 Hamsi
finding yourself down 2-0 in the series. So we'll find out what happens. Do they have it in them? I know they have the individual skill. I know they have the shots, but they need to have the teamwork here to try to make something happen. Flux, he's trying to live, just skedaddling down towards the open, lifting up towards the area, trying to help his teammates. But there's another one behind him, so that's... I don't want to sound like a broken record here, Tom, but again, they killed three. One player lifts up open purple and breaks that setup and causes this problem that now the guys from Aspire Esports find themselves in. Great job. Get the overshield. Fantastic. Kill three. You cannot let one player stay alive long enough to then disrupt your setup. You need to be quicker on that final kill. It's really crucial here that they pick up this custom. They have to pick up this custom and they have to milk some sort of time here. If they're not able to get around that like 180, 190 mark, it's going to be so difficult because there's only one minute left in that final hill, and unless you're already waiting over towards that close side, you're gonna be in a very, very tough situation. Fortunately for Aspire, Mazer isn't sitting at like 240 or 230 anywhere enough where they can win this hill towards the bottom side. They can if they have a nice setup here like they did originally, and it's gonna start with Fusion here picking up another double kill. I can't wait to see what his stats are afterwards, but now this is what I was worried about, them potentially getting the weapons. I like that wasted rocket there from Havoc just going and committing suicide there so his teammates can pick it up off of his dead body and the enemy team doesn't get it. Riots has to win this battle, and he does so we'll see what riots is going to be able to do with these two rockets because they have to milk time here they have to bring it within 20 seconds otherwise this last hill just adds so much pressure especially when you're down 2-0 in the series they get the three dead they get sniper they get rockets but they do not get the overshield i was just about to say it was a delayed overshield by around a minute and the one thing that they let slip through their fingers is now stabbing them in the back flames is inside the hill overshield in hand does get sniped once flux takes him down with some help from two Foxy, and they've managed to negate the overshield, but again, have they given themselves too much to do here? Players dropping on the hill, Fusion somehow wins a battle wow. 2v1. Sky is playing some incredible Halo 3 right now. So here it is, it's all gonna come down to this last minute and a half, 15 more seconds. They can win on this hill because this one's moving in about 25 seconds. So you're in a really tough spot Ooh. now. And that's what I was worried about for Aspire because you're stuck between having to force yourself into this bottom hill and get these guys out of it. And while you do that, they're just going to set up over towards the close side and milk the last six seconds, and you're going to have to desperate over that. Not sure what Havoc's doing in that situation. There's no reason for him to do that. Maybe because he realizes his two teammates are already over there, but that's the deadly close oh, side they went up gold, gold spawn that we were talking about earlier that's been biting teams in the butt, and there's plenty of time to come back here. They have to hold almost this entire setup. 250 to 244 is the score that they're looking for. And there's one thing that isn't going to be in play here. That's the overshield, because there isn't enough time for that to respawn. So it's a straight up dogfight here. I think you're going to see a big push up that closed lift from all of the players on Mazer Gaming. They know that they just have to get them out of the hill. But look at this from Aspire. They get four dead, but they need to get in the hill. Is there enough time? I think they can wow. tie at this point, but that could be a huge mistake. Get in the hill. All they have to do is get them out of the hill once, and at this point you almost need two people in the hill because if two Foxy gets grenaded and falls out of the hill or gets taken down, that's going to be game. So we'll see what happens here. They may get that extra tick if they're super lucky to try to win this one 245 to 244. Otherwise, we're going to be here looking at a tie the game. And there it he is. The grenade out. takes them out of the hill. That's what I was talking about. They're going to need to send multiple people into the hill, and it just didn't work out. So unfortunate there for Aspire, but you can't take anything away from Mazer. Just one hell of a series for these guys as you look at Havoc getting pumped up, fist bumping the crowd, and GG's all around. Solid, solid series. 3-0, the end result. Mazer Gaming certainly announced themselves as someone to watch a little bit late on in the tournament, but for Aspire, you're done. The only thing they've got left to do is pack their bags and head home. Not the performance that they certainly would have wanted from this tournament, but they just gave themselves so much to do there, Tom. And Fusion was the player we were talking about. Great stat lines, only a positive three, but 24 assists to talk of, and a lot of game-changing plays from him as well. Good thing he went on that killing frenzy, otherwise he'd be <laughs> negative, good point. Ten, <laughs> negative 10 or so. So just a fantastic job during that spree. As you look at Riot sitting at 34 and 22, we were highlighting him throughout a majority of the, the series there for the Aspire side. Unfortunately for them, it was King of the Hill instead of Slayer, and they just didn't get enough time in that hill, and just too little, too late is the story there for Aspire. They did it in Onslaught CTF, they did it in Heretic Slayer, and then they did it again in Construct King. They just didn't turn up 
early enough in the series, and unfortunately for them, that resulted in a 3-0. But hats off again to Mazer Gaming. You can't take anything away from them. You can't say anything about aspiring playing slow when you're playing fast. Fantastic stuff then from Mazer Gaming. They will keep their tournament hopes alive moving forward in the lower bracket. Round four into the next round. You can see the series layout there, 3-2. They managed to clutch up in overtime in Onslaught, capture the flag, having had a 2-0 lead for the majority of that game. The last few desperate caps that came in to tie up and send it to overtime. 50-46, again, a horrible start from Aspire in that game. But this was the final game of the series, King of the Hill. And again, it came right down to the last few seconds. And I have to give what huge a credit, credit, excuse me, to Mazer Gaming. The way that they formulated a push there and didn't get carried away with the situation with so much on the line, hats off to them. Yeah, because again, you look at the first two games and all three of the games, they really could have went any way. Great play there from Snakey, by the way, as he drops down and gets hyped up and gives him a let's go. And even just patiently waiting for that player to pop into the hill, as you can see the hill outline showing around. And again, Flames here with another heads up play as he pre-grenaded as the custom power up was coming up. You saw everybody doing the right plays here. It's surprising to me that Aspire was even able to hang for a majority of that game because how well we were seeing these guys play on the Mazer gaming side. We saw this insane killing spree coming in from Fusion. You saw the sniper spree, you saw the killing frenzy. He was taking the right angles. He wasn't over challenging. He had his teammates helping him. Like, look at this. You have one player with rockets R1. You have another sniper over towards the open street. Now you have another player rotating over towards the hill. I mean, heck, Aspire was lucky to me that they were even able to bring that game close because I didn't see many mistakes happening from the Mazer gaming side. Yeah, I have to agree with you. They really did play that final game exceptionally well and kept it together at the end as well. And uh, one player that I want to hear from is down on the floor with Wonderboy right now. Snakey, we heard you screaming, let's go. How are you feeling right now? Thank you so much, Onset. I'm here with Snakey, as you said. Uh, congratulations, mate. I mean, uh, a wonderful series. It was super close. Uh, initial thoughts out of that one? Um, initial thoughts was we went in it confident for the whole time. Um, yeah, that was it, man. We were just confident. We knew we beat them. You know, I mean, we knew we'd definitely beat them. So it was just like, yeah, staying composed and staying confident. You guys seem to let them back into the game late on. Is that something that you guys are going to have to work on going into this next series? Yeah, definitely. We have a trouble of closing up maps, as you can see. Like they brought it back a few of the maps, uh, but we stay composed. You know, as I said, like it was confident we'd win. So yeah, it's just literally staying composed. That's just the main thing when it comes to like a team coming back. Why do you think it is that you let teams back in? Do you guys maybe get a little bit lazy? Yeah, we just get a bit lazy, get a bit flustered, you know, like start um, over challenging, doing things that we wasn't doing in the beginning. And then obviously they were playing well to bring it back in the first place. So yeah, it's just playing over confident and not carrying on with our initial structure. Wicked. So you guys play against RBL now in the rematch in the, the elimination bracket final. Rate your chances here. Obviously, you fell to them earlier. Do you think you have what it takes to, to beat them here? Yeah, definitely. I wouldn't be here if I didn't think I'd beat every team here. Do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, no, they're a good team. Uh, fell short to them on the first series. But yeah, we're feeling much more confident. So we'll give uh, another blast. Awesome. Snakey, thank you so much, mate. Congratulations on the win. Good luck in your next match. Guys at home, do not go anywhere. When we are back, we will have more Halo 3 action here at the Face at Ignite.